Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to prove that this sequence given by x sub n equal to the definite integral from one to n of cosine t over t squared is bounded. So first, let me recall what it means for a sequence to be bounded. So we say a sequence, say a sub n, is bounded, and this is the actual definition of bounded, if there exists a number, so this backwards E means exists, I'm gonna use the letter M, you could use any letter you like, and we can assume it's positive, such that if you take the absolute value of a sub n, it's less than or equal to big M, and this has to be true for all integers n for which the sequence is defined. So I'll say for all, that's, that's the upside down a, lowercase n, in the set of positive integers. So this is the set of positive integers. So I'm using a little bit, uh, some notation here that you may have not seen. This means there exists an m greater than zero. Uh, this is the absolute value. If you're working in higher dimensions, you, you just use the norm. Uh, less than or equal to m, that means for all n, and this is the set of positive integers. Okay, so we basically just have to prove that this is true for this particular sequence at hand. Um, it really shouldn't be too bad. Let's try it, so proof. So we'll start by taking the absolute value and we'll just work through it. Uh, we should be able to do it. So note, for all n, for all positive integers n, we're going to look at the absolute value of the sequence. So the absolute value of x sub n, well, that's equal to the absolute value of this definite integral. So this will be equal to the absolute value from one to n of cosine t, and this is over t squared dt. Now I've done this problem before, I did it right before I made this video, so this is how I figured it out. I figured it out by just writing this down and going through it, and it actually worked out. So if you were trying to do this on your own, this is exactly what you would do. So at this point, we can use a property of integrals. Whenever you have an absolute value outside of an integral, you can put a less than or equal to here and bring it inside. So this will be the definite integral from one to n of the absolute value, okay, of cosine t over t squared, and then we still have the dt. Now you have the absolute value of cosine over the absolute value of t squared. So what you can do is you can take the absolute value of each piece. So I'm gonna come over here, this is equal to the definite integral from one to n. Then we have the absolute value of cosine t over the absolute value of t squared. But t squared is positive, so we can drop the absolute value there. Then we have dt. Now we know something about the absolute value of cosine. It's less than or equal to one. So this is less than or equal to the definite integral from one to n of one over t squared dt. So this is something you can prove. Uh, it's, it's, we're using something that you have to prove. If you have like f less than g, uh, if you have f less than or equal to g on some interval, then the integral of f is less than or equal to the integral of g on that interval. So it's, it's something you can prove. Uh, so we're using that here. We can actually integrate this using some skill. So this is equal to, uh, you can bring it upstairs. This is t to the negative two dt, one to n, and we can just use the power rule from straight up calculus, right? You add one and divide by that. So t to the negative one over negative one. So that's gonna be, I'll, I'll, I'll write it. It's t to the negative one, I was gonna skip a step, over negative one and we're going from one to n. This is the same thing as negative one over t from one to n. And as you know, you plug in the n first, so we get negative one over n minus, but it's a plus, so plus one over one. So this is equal to one minus one over n. And here's the, the punchline. Um, one minus one over n is smaller than one, right? Because you're taking one and you're subtracting a number smaller than one. So it's always gonna be smaller than one. So we have that x sub n, the absolute value of x sub n is less than or equal to one. And this is true for all positive integers n. So for all n and z plus. And this is precisely what it means for a sequence to be bounded. So thus our sequence x sub n is bounded and that completes uh, the proof. I like to finish my proofs with a box with, with an X. That's just uh, what I use 
uh, the old school way is QED. Uh, maybe it's still new school. I don't, I don't use QED. I stole that from someone else. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.